Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Focus for Saturday, November the 5th, 2022, at 9.55 a.m. Central Time. Five signs of spiritual immaturity. Five signs of a spiritually immature Christian. We have been working on this for the past few days, and today we conclude our look at spiritual immaturity. We conclude our look at the five signs of a spiritually immature Christian, and I hope you've been challenged. I know some of you have really struggled with some of these points. I hope you appreciate that we have, that I found an article that really looks at this subject, I think, from a very unique perspective. This is not the typical look at spiritual immaturity or spiritual maturity. I I mean, I could preach those sermons all day because I've heard them so many times. This is taking, I believe, a unique look. You may not think it's as unique. If you know of other sermons who look at it the exact same way, please send them to me, newsif at yahoo.com, because I would like to hear them talk about each one of these points, or at least look at the unique way they approach the subject of spiritual maturity and spiritual immaturity. I hope you've been challenged And of course, please share your thoughts and your perspective on all of this. But let's review quickly the four signs of spiritual immaturity, and today we'll look at number five. Are you ready? Here we go. Number one, the first sign of spiritual immaturity is certainty. Certainty. That, that, I mean, just the certainty is a sign of spiritual immaturity. I don't think I don't think if you were to ask all the people in your church, one person would say certainty. That's the number one sign of spiritual immaturity. I, I don't think they would say that. They would be certain that they know the signs of spiritual immaturity, and certainty wouldn't be one of them. Number two, self-loathing. Self-loathing is the second sign of spiritual immaturity. Number three, defensiveness. Defensiveness is number three. And number four was scapegoating. Scapegoating. That brings us today to number five. Number five. I I, I wonder, see, I I, I don't know. I I don't know if anyone's listening to me live, but I almost want to just wait. But remember, I'm supposed to keep these around 15 minutes long. I almost want to wait to see if anybody could guess what number five is. It would be interesting to know if anyone could. But you can just think in your own mind what you think number five is, and you can go ahead and write it down on the paper. Write it in pencil because you may have to erase it. Or you can you can just write it even in pen if you write it in pen. I'm not here to argue about pen or pencil today. You can just write it down. And then when after I say what it is, you can put an X by yours. Okay, I'm joking. Maybe you'll get it right. Maybe you'll get it right. Are you ready? Here we go. The number five sign of spiritual immaturity is self-justification. Self-justification. What do you think they mean by that? Do you mean that there's a person who runs around all the time justifying themselves, justifying, no, 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 I didn't do anything wrong, and they they can justify everything? Or do you think it goes deeper than that? What do you think? Well, they begin by going to the movie Chariots of Fire. Now, I don't think I ever saw the full movie. I obviously remember the theme song from Chariots of Fire, which was a big hit. Um, I... I know that I've I've seen the movie referenced in sermon illustrations. It feels like a million times, uh, but I maybe because so many people talked about oh, church of fire. You have to see uh, when I guess whenever many Christians, I know this is my anti-conformity comes into me. One of the reasons I can't stand the Lord of the Rings uh, or the the books or the movies. I, I do like the, uh, the the series on Amazon Prime, mainly, mainly because Christians complained about the series on Amazon Prime. So I think you see where I'm going. Uh, when Whenever Christians are like, this is the movie you have to watch. If you're really godly and they shove it down your throat, like Lord of the Rings, like if you watch anything else, why would you watch that? You need to watch Lord of the Rings. You need to watch, oh, just stop, just stop, stop, leave me alone. And it just, it creates like an utter like, 
I detest it. I hate, well, Chariots of Fire was one of those others, at least in the late 80s and the 90s, early 90s, that, you know, if you're a Christian, have you seen Chariots of Fire? Oh, it's an amazing movie. You've seen, oh, okay, just, just stop, just stop. I, don't, I know, it's just my anti-conformity. So I don't know a lot about Chariots of Fire. I know the basic story, but here we go. We, we're going to have an illustration from Chariots of Fire. So we'll see, we'll see. Here we go. Number five, the number fifth sign of spiritual immaturity. Maybe a sign of spiritual immaturity is when everyone says, hey, you should really watch this movie. This is great. And, and as a Christian, you'll love it that I immediately hate it. Maybe that's a sign of spiritual immaturity. All right, here we go. Self-justification is the number five sign of spiritual immaturity. Here we go. In the movie, Chariots of Fire, one of the main characters, Harold M. Abrahams, an athlete who is training to race in the 100-meter sprint at the 1924 Olympics is asked, Hey, why are you working so hard? Why, what is it that gets you up at the crack of dawn training for hours and hours on end? Harry Abrahams replies by saying, When that gun goes off, I have just 10 Lonely seconds to justify my existence. Wow. That's a powerful line. All right, so let, let, let me go through this again. If we go a little long on this one, I, I hope you will forgive me. All right, here we go. So in the movie Chariots of Fire, one of the main characters, Harold M. Abrahams, an athlete who is training to race in the 100-meter sprint at the 1924 Olympics, is asked, hey, why are you working so hard? What is it that gets you up at the crack of dawn training for hours and hours on end? And Harry Abrahams replies by saying, you think you would say, because I'm trying to win a gold medal. I'm trying to win the Olympics. But that's not his answer. His answer is this. This is why he's up at the crack of dawn. This is why he's working so hard, right? And I quote, when that gun goes off, in other words, at the beginning of the race, when they fire the gun, when that gun goes off, I have just 10 Lonely seconds to justify my existence. He was working so hard so that when he ran a race, he could justify his existence. Do you find that beautiful? Do you found that? Do you find that horribly depressing? I, I don't know. Th this is how they use it. They say, think about that. What he is really saying, what is he really saying? He is saying this, I want to know that I'm justified in being here, that my life is worth something, that my life counts, that I'm a person who is worthy to be known and accepted, and the way I'm going to do that is to become a runner. So for Harry Abrahams, it's not just a gold medal, it's his justification. It makes him feel worthy, accepted, and validated. Some of you may have heard of Sid, Sidney Pollack, a famous movie director. He created movies like Sense and Sensibility, The Firm, uh, Talented, Mr. Ripley, and a whole stack more. He died in 2007. A newspaper article written about him shortly before he died said that although he was getting old and was unwell, that he couldn't stop working, even though his family was saying, please stop working, you're killing yourself. He couldn't stop working. The newspaper article written before his death revealed why. It read, Movie mogul Sidney Pollack says that although the grueling filmmaking process is wearying, wearying him down, he can't justify his existence if he stops. Pollock said, Every time I finish a picture, I feel I've earned my stay for another year or so. What is he really saying? Well, it's kind of the same thing as the runner in Chariots of Fire. Everyone needs to feel that they're doing something that justifies their being here. The need to justify ourselves seems to be a universal struggle. Many of us strive to achieve things so that we can convince ourselves that we're okay. We're acceptable. We're worthy. Sidney uh, uh, Pollock had to keep making movies. One gold medal was not enough for Harry Abrahams. John D. Rockefeller said, one more million dollars, and th then I'll feel I'm okay. Now, what, is, what does all of that have to do with spiritual immaturity? What, all of those are 
Very powerful example. So I guess we could stop here and you could ask yourself this. What do you do? What do you feel you're doing to justify your existence? Do you feel you live your life with this like just voice in the back of your head? You've got to find a reason to justify your, your, your existence. You've got to find a reason to justify why you're here. You've got a reason to justify yourself. You've got to self-justify. You've got to self-justify yourself. You've got to figure it out. What, what is it that you are doing to justify your existence? This is how they apply it to Christians. Many Christians take it a step further by trying to justify themselves, not only to the world, but to God. And they do it through morality and performance-based religion. Whether they perceive it or not, many Christians have reduced their faith down to a sin management program, believing that if they're good enough, God will accept them. They can even impose this moral struggle on others, policing the behaviors of others around them as if God would somehow find this pleasing. Immature Christians are always trying to justify them selves. Do you live your Christian life as if you're, you, the way you live your Christian life, the, the godliness, the performance that you carry out, that that somehow justifies you having salvation, that somehow justifies you being a Christian, that somehow justifies things about you. It justifies your existence which then you're, it just becomes a performance-based religion. And you're just, you're on this treadmill. You're on this hamster wheel, you're just running and running and running, trying to perform, trying to perform because you've got to justify yourself. You, and, it, and I know theologically, you're like, no, 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 no. I'm justified by faith. No, no, no. I'm justified by imputed righteousness. But the way you live your Christian life is you're trying to justify yourself. You're trying to prove something. Over and over and over and over and over and over again. Now, I cannot speak for you, but I can speak for me. I have lived a good portion of my Christian life trying to, as they say, uh, self-justification, trying to justify myself, trying to prove that, yes, I, I'm a good Christian. And I, and, and I get caught in trying to do this and trying to do this and trying to do that and trying to do that. You, if you listen to this podcast for any length of time, you probably know that I have a major problem with self-justifying myself in this way and how I do the podcast. I'm ne I, I am always, I got to do one more episode. I got to prove that I'm good at this. I got to do one more. I got to, oh, oh, I messed it up. I've got to do three now to make up for that mess up. Oh, wait, I messed that up. I got to do four. Wait, I got to do five. Wait, I need to do six. Wait, I need to do more. 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 I didn't like that sermon. I need to do more sermons. I, 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 I live my life trying to constantly prove something, trying to prove that I'm okay, that I'm good, trying to make up for all of my past failures, trying to make up for all of my past sins, never really at ease, never really at rest, always trying a little harder to bring some kind of justification for my existence. And I feel that you do the same thing. Immature Christians are always trying to justify themselves. Mature Christians aren't particularly troubled by sin because they understand that there is no need to justify themselves to God. In fact, Romans 3.24 says, we are freely justified by his grace through Christ Jesus. Sure, if our sin hurts other people, that we must con uh, then we must confront it. But the belief that our goodness and effort somehow make us more acceptable to God is a baby Christian belief. Grow up. Now, I, I, I would disagree a little bit, and I believe that our sin should bother us, but it can bother us, right? So, yes, we don't want to do it. Yes, we are going to confess it. Yes, we're going to make sure we, our mind is changed about it. Make sure we obviously turn to the grace of God. But what we can't do is find ourselves in a never-ending cycle of self-justification, we just can't find ourselves in that cycle where we're trying so hard to justify our existence, to justify why we're a Christian, to justify somehow ourselves before God, to make sure God will accept us, make sure God will be happy with us. 
make sure God will be pleased with us. Sometimes, at least I can't speak for you, sometimes I feel like I have to constantly try to justify myself in the eyes of others. Now, typically, I, I, outside of Christianity, I don't think that way. I don't really care what anybody thinks. But as a Christian, you know that what when you're trying to be a Christian podcaster or a pastor, sadly, you have to worry about what other people think, because if they don't like you, then they don't listen to you, they don't come to your church, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can find yourself in a performance-based system. Self-justifying, self-justification. Oh, there's so much more I want to say about this. So much more I want to say about all of these. I would challenge you to look up the article. Um, It's by Dan Foster, The Five Signs of a Spiritually Immature Christian. Uh, It's a part of the, I think it's called the, uh, what is it? What's the name of this app? I think it's the Medium app is what it's called. I believe it's called the Medium app. And uh, if you you can't find it, I will will try to, I I can send you a link. Newsif at yahoo.com. Newsif at yahoo.com. Dan Foster did an amazing job on this. I would recommend if you if you've ever looked at the Medium app, I think it's like a three or four dollars a month. There's lots of, of interesting articles, and if you do uh, ever do uh, look there, you can read one. I think one article free a month. I would look at Dan Foster's articles because even even if you may disagree with his perspectives, I always think he has a challenging perspective on Christianity. And uh, I didn't read his conclusion because we're out of time. Uh, but um, yeah, we, 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 we're definitely going to, we're going to have to return to some of these things soon. We're going to have to return to these things soon. We really are. But there you have it. There you have it. I, there's so much more I want to say, but self-justification is the number five sign of the spiritually immature Christian. I know I definitely struggle a little bit with self-justification. I do. Theologically, I know. I I mean, I have the theology down. I am justified by faith alone because of an imputed righteousness, not an infused righteousness. I know it. But man, come on, I, I, I I I got 10 lonely seconds to justify my existence. I've got 45 minutes on a podcast to justify my existence. I've got 20 minutes on a podcast to justify my existence. I have another sermon to justify my existence. I have another day to try to live my Christian life in a way that will justify my existence. Typically, all I do is fall short of all, everything. All right, you can email me, newsif at yahoo.com. That is your today's focus for this Saturday, November the 5th.